Hi, I wanted to talk a little bit about a topic that's come up a lot in the coach training course I'm leading, um, comes up with clients, I've been thinking about it, you know, for a while and wanting to write or talk about it. And it's this question of why our thinking feels and looks so real and why it's so easy to get attached to it. So if we know that, you know, we live in this sea of thought and everyone, every one of us has different thinking. We all see things differently and it's very biased, very contaminated by our mood at the moment, by what's on our mind, by what happened, especially our thinking that's painful and very limiting and, um, you know, just not having that nice, clear, free, open feeling to it. We can know for sure that's not the truth of life. That's psychology work. That's, you know, our human mind seeing things in a way that is limited and that is not fully accurate. So, you know, if we can know that, why is it that when we're thinking in that way, so when we're judging ourselves or others or just seeing things as hopeless, it feels so darn true. You know, it, it doesn't feel so easy to say, oh, that's just my thinking. You know, why is it that we, it's so natural, it feels so natural and so easy to get attached to what runs through our mind, that moving, changing experience. So part of it is really fascinating, you know, and it's just, just the fact that it's kind of the way we're wired, that when thought comes up within us, it is brought to life in this amazing 3D, you know, multi-dimensional, sensory-filled experience that gives us our every single experience of life. So it's an extremely good system. You know, it's, it's a, it's this, it gives us this great vivid experience of what's going on around us and of other people. And it just, it's what makes us human. Um, so it's not a bad thing. It's just that it, it doesn't work one way for the helpful, true, positive stuff and another way for the stuff that's less positive. It brings it all to life and it makes it all look true and gripping you know, and feel like that. So, so I think that's a piece of it that's interesting to see. And really kind of where I wanted to, to go with this is kind of how, how we treat thought as we grow up. So we talk about attachment to thought, attachment to experience. Well, we have attachment to our caregivers, you know, another kind of attachment that's written about in a lot of psychology, which is like our emotional attachment to our caregivers when we're young. And there are secure attachments and less secure attachments. So basically, you know, children that grow up with supportive, loving parents that take care of their basic needs, and I'm not talking about if you're a parent, I'm not talking about doing everything right. I'm just saying you love your kids, you're there for them, and you feed and clothe them regularly, and they know that, and they can rely on you for that. They come to have that kind of secure attachment. And unfortunately, not all children grow up with that. So there are other kinds of attachment too, and they're a little more tenuous. Um, but you know, as I write about in being human, naturally kids, those that are, especially those that are securely attached and just feel safe in the world, thinking moves through them very quickly. They don't get particularly attached to thinking, right? That's why their moods change all the time and they're very extreme, they feel a lot of stuff, but they tend to, to float back to that natural default peace that's within all of us quite easily and quite quickly. They don't get hung up because they're not thinking about their thinking and they're not all in there and attached to it. And as we grow up, that changes a little bit. We tend to retreat into our heads. We tend to think about our thinking and think about our experience a lot more. And that's just normal. So I don't know anyone who is still totally childlike. You know, certainly we kind of return back to that and we can be that a little more or less. But, you know, I think in general, as we grow up through life, we just kind of get more into our heads. We get smarter, more intelligent, and we hang out there a little bit more. So when you have that, again, that secure attachment, you feel safe in the world, you have a little longer in general to just kind of hang out in life. You don't think anything horrible is going to happen. It just, that thought hasn't occurred to you. So you're just taking life as it comes. And for all of us, at some point, something happens. And a lot of times it's between the ages of kind of two and five where, you know, you're feeling safe and secure and all is well. And then suddenly, I don't know, your parents get divorced. Uh, the neighbor kid teases you. Your dog dies. 
something happens that kind of shakes you, kind of makes you question your safety in the world. And again, this has nothing to do with being a bad parent or anything like this just happens. It happens to everyone at some point. And how I think that goes is that thing happens and we in our little kid mind say, oh my gosh, okay, maybe I'm not as safe as I thought. Either, you know, what do I have to do to prevent this? What should I have done? How do I need to be from now on? What do I need to do to make that neighbor kid like me and stop teasing me? How can I make my parents happy again? We go right into our heads and we start, it, it's, it's our survival instinct, you know? It's not a bad thing, but it's what kind of shifts us from being just in life, feeling free and safe, to thinking about life a little bit more and coming up with strategies and plans. And again, that in and of itself is not a bad thing. It's just that once we get into our heads, we tend to live there more and more. And then we grow into adults who sometimes, unfortunately, are thinking about life far more than we are actually living it. So it's a natural process. It happens for all of us. And, you know, if, if we don't have that feeling of safety and security in the world, so for children who don't have their basic needs met from an early age, they tend to get in their heads a little quicker. That's why you see kids with, you know, kind of more troubled childhoods who don't have that light, free, safe, easy spirit that you see in the other little kids. Um, and so it's just, it's interesting, I think, to see that attachment to thought it's not a bad thing. We can, it's easy for it to kind of look like a bad thing. And certainly it gets us into trouble as adults, even as children, it gets us into trouble. It changes our experience of life, but it's a helpful adaptive thing. It starts that way. It's just that as a little kid, when we get scared and we think that's the safe place, let me figure this all out to prevent anything bad from happening again. You know, we're seeing things through little kid eyes. And then from there on, it almost becomes a habit where we just retreat there a little more and more. So the wonderful thing to see, I think, is just the understanding of how this happens. And what I love about working with adults, talking with adults all the time who have come back to this understanding, have gotten to kind of have had that chance to go back and remember, oh, this is what's true of life. You know, that's how I felt when I was a kid. All of our obstacles that we, we hit through life, all of the hard times, the anxiety, depression, the habits, addictions, all of that that um, you know, feels really hard and horrible is often what gets people to that point where they say, okay, enough already. Like, this isn't working. I need to see something new. And a lot of times, you know, luckily what they get to see new that just helps them with their initial problem to start actually opens them back up to this whole experience. So I know it was like that for me, you know, feeling a, being a happy, free, light kid and then hitting that point and then that thing's not being so easy for a lot of years until finally there was that tipping point and said, okay, this cannot be what life is supposed to be like. And in that point, that almost surrender point or that searching point, we stumble upon something that kind of brings us back full circle and you get a chance to see and remember and understand how our mind works, remember what it was like to feel like a kid again. And we can return to that. Maybe not in exactly the same way, but you know, a lot closer than I than a lot of adults are, a lot closer than than we probably all are. So much of that is possible for us at any point. Just by understanding how this all works, you know, and seeing that when we're in our heads, it is a habit that we've picked up and fed into for years and years and years. But as protective as it might feel, as our strategies and plans might look, they aren't. That was the thinking of a two-year-old or three or four or five-year-old. That was the conclusion that little kid made. But it's not necessarily the way to live now, you know, and it's not what's going to be helpful now, even though it might really feel like it. So it's just a little bit about how and why we do get so attached to our thinking and even the thinking that kind of hurts us. And I just think it's wonderful to be able to see that in a way that doesn't make it feel like it's a flaw of, of the human mind or you know how, how the human experience works. It's not a flaw at all. It was a really good protective thing. We just want to understand it and then we can use it to our advantage and not be so kind of boxed in by the negative sides of it. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for listening.